<laughs> okay, now we come to the next stage in the proof. We're still proving this extension result, this extension theorem. And now we, we know that this object is sigma algebra. Now we turn our looks to the external measure. And now we will show that the external measure is in fact truly measure on this sigma algebra. So the content of the proof is this one. If I start off with the two elements of my sigma algebra F, then the measure, external measure of a disjoint union like this will be sum of individual measures like this. Again, this is the content of my proof. So I put it under the question mark. I immediately observe for you that actually we know that the external measure is semi-additive, so we certainly have the inequality like this. So the whole content will be in showing the opposite inequality, the inequality like this. So, here's the presentation. Again, I start with the epsilon. I'll, fi I'll fix an epsilon. Because these two are the Bay measurable, I can produce two elements of the minimal enveloping ring, such that the, this external measure and this external measure are less than epsilon. Uh, again, I observe the following relations between sets. Uh, two relations between sets, and they are relatively easy to check. I'll leave it for you to look into this. Because my measure is, my external measure is semi-additive, I have immediately have something like this, and something like this. The measure of the left-hand side is less than the measure of the right-hand side, and on the right-hand side I use a semi-additivity, so individually measure of this, and epsilon for this, and similarly I argue here. Now, I also draw your attention that we know that the external measure on elements of the minimal enveloping ring coincides with the original measure M, so here actually I can use the original measure, and that's my using of it. So the sum of these two individual left-hand sides is less than sum of the right-hand sides, and I will replace now the M star here with the original measure, because A dash from, come from here, comes from here, two epsilons, now, this M is a measure, like a normal measure, which is, edit, which is an additive function. So, for this measure, I can use the additivity property, which says that this will be, they are not necessarily disjoint, so I can put something like this, and I have to add up the intersection. This is, a kind of, this is one of the elementary properties of measures we proved with you earlier. That's here, here's the place where we use them. Sum of the individual measures equal to the measure of the union plus the measure of intersection. And here's my two epsilon. Now I have to estimate this and this separately. For this estimate, for this estimate, I will use the following set identity. The union of A dash and B dash, it's the subset of the disjoint union of A and B, and union with the set difference, symmetric difference like this, and the symmetric difference like this. Again. I'm not going to comment on this set relation. I hope you can establish it independently. And for the intersection, I do something similar. Similar. The intersection of A dash and B dash is a subset of the intersection of A and B union with the corresponding set differences. Good. Now I can use these two embeddings to estimate this measure and this measure because the measure of this union, M measure, can be replaced with the M star measure, external measure, if they coincide. I can use the semi-additivity of the external measure, and I can use the fact that the external measure of this bracket and this bracket is just controlled by the number epsilon. And so I come to inequality like this from the first embedding. With the second embedding, I also observe that this is just the empty set. Because remember, A and B assume to be disjoint. So in fact, this one is a subset of just these two symmetric differences. Each of them, in terms of the external measure, controlled by a number of epsilon, here and here. So for the intersection, in fact, we have this control. Now if I replace this and this with what I just come up with here and here, I have then that the left hand side is controlled by the right hand side, no, actually the other way around. The, left, the right hand side here is controlled by this left hand side plus six epsilons. Because again, epsilon was assumed to be arbitrary, 
any number, any positive number. In fact, you can drop it from this inequality. You can drop it from this inequality, and then you will have the opposite to this inequality, which came from this semi-additivity of external measure. And that's how we finish proving that the external measure on, the, on our sigma algebra of the Bay measurable subset is in fact measure in the proper sense.